Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So today I'm going to be talking about the Zandalari Warbingers and, I guess, also the War Scouts. So basically these guys were added in patch 5.2 and they actually drop a lot of really nice items. Mainly crafting bags, and well basically bags full of crafting mats which are pretty cool. Then three kinds of dire horn mount, and then finally some reputation tokens, which will give you 1,000 rep with a faction. So first of all, I'm just going to say, um, why did I start killing them? Well, basically, I wanted to get my August Celestial's reputation up a lot on my Feral Druid so that I could buy the crafting recipe for the Royal Satchel, which required Exalted. Really annoying, but I was able to hit Exalted within a day. Now, my main character was already pretty well wrapped up with him. It actually only needed about 8k um, reputation. So, basically, I started killing Zalandari, or sorry, not Zalandari, Zandalari Warbringers. I got a whole bunch of these tokens. I uh, leveled up my main, then I bought the revered um, commendation thingy. And then from that, it took maybe, I don't know, 20 of those rep tokens to actually get my alt up to exalted with them. It was extremely fast, it was extremely easy, and I would rather spend five hours farming these Warbringers than I would like spending, say, two or three weeks farming up the reputation via doing four daily quests per day. Not that much fun. So one of the things that I get, well, I actually got a lot of crafting materials from it, and those crafting materials definitely got me a good bit of money. Later on, I'll be showing you just um, the aftermath of one of my one-hour sessions killing these guys, and I'll talk about how much money I made and, uh, and that kind of thing. Now, another thing that's just worth saying is that my realm popu um, population is currently normal. It's medium. It's not that big, and it's not that small, but I am on by far the most populous faction on my server, which is the Alliance. Now, this means that there really wasn't any competition for these guys at all when it came to about, say, 2 to 3 a.m., and that's when I chose to farm them. And what was very good is that with, uh, with the way that these guys spawn, and I'll talk about farming and all that kind of thing uh, you know, later on, but with the way these guys spawn, if you find one and no one else is farming them, chances are you'll find all five. And uh, you're just you know going to spend half an hour killing all of them, getting quite a lot in terms of loot. It really did work out quite well, but if you're on a really populous faction, well, this just is not going to work for you. Perhaps you could get someone to invite you over to a realm which is really small, but other than that, you don't really have much of an option there. So, how do you kill these guys? Well, that's one thing that's very important, and I'm going to walk you through it. Now, first of all, you're going to need good gear. These guys are strong, they are meant to be killed by a group, so if you're going to solo them, you're going to need good gear. I can't say exactly what you'll need for other classes, because I'm a hunter, so I had a pet which gave me, I guess, a very strong latent advantage when it came to killing these guys. Like, I guess warlocks could also be at a, at a good advantage. Still though, I know that these were killable in patch 5.3 by quite a few classes, so maybe if you just read up some class specific things, because I don't know the ins and outs of every single class. Still though, they have six main ab abilities, but all of these, the only ones you have to worry about are, well first of all there's her, um, Horrific Visage. This is just a fear, and it will uh, fear you for eight seconds. Now during this eight seconds, chances are this guy will nib nibble you to pieces unless you have a pet or... You have some way of breaking out of that fear, so whenever that fear comes up, you want to make sure you have something that can break out of it. Maybe a PvP trinket, like a cheap PvP trinket or something like that. But yes, yeah, 7 second fear, it's not much fun. The next one we have is a meteor shower. This is simple, actually. Just don't stand to the meteors when they fall on the ground. It really couldn't get any easier than that. Then next we have Scarab Swarm. Basically, um, for this, they just summoned a whole bunch of Scarabs. Just AoE them down. Really easy, really quick, not much of a problem. The next one is Thunder Crash. Now for this, they will basically have this cone in front of them. You just don't want to stand in the cone because when that, uh, you know, sort of clashes out, it will deal over half of your HP as damage. So it's definitely a pretty painful one. Then we, there's one called Unstable Serum. This stuns nearby enemies for five seconds, apparently. Though I don't really remember experiencing it, so I'm not too sure what's up there. And then finally, there is Vengeful Spirit. This summons a ad, and this will basically follow you. It can't, well, it probably can be killed, it's got three and a half million health, but you really shouldn't. You just want to kite it and run away from it, and it will disappear after maybe ten seconds or whatever. So that's basically how to kill them. You may want to have some sort of DPS cooldowns, maybe, um, basically just cooldowns in general are probably going to be useful. And if you know that you can kill all five of these, it might be worth popping a flask if you really are having DPS issues or something. But overall, you should just be able to take it slow, pay attention to the mechanics, and be fine. I die very rarely to these, although there are one or two times when I, I just mess up, frankly, and that will cause me to die. 
if you screw up the mechanics in these, you'll get killed. That's just the way it goes. Anyway, so now, now that I've talked about how to kill them, let's talk about spawning. So I'm going to show some maps on the screen that just basically show their spawn locations. Plus, you'll see the background footage as well, um, you know, where they all spawn. There's five of them throughout the world, and they spawn what seems to be every 35 to 50 minutes each. So it's possible to have all five of them up at once, and that has certainly happened to me before. I mean, in general, though, I'd say they have a median respawn time of about 40 minutes. So by the time you, you know, you kill the first one, then you move your way around Pandaria, and you get back to where the first one is. If you wait 10 or 15 minutes, then either the first or second one should, should respawn. Um, of course, the actual respawn times, they're not fixed in stone. They are maybe a 20-minute range, so you'll just have to time it out there. It can be a little bit annoying, but per honestly, I think that it's the sort of thing you could probably just go do one run of them and then be done with it. And that's really okay. Now, in terms of the other guys, you'll get these, uh, the War Scouts. Um, I've seen about two of these spawn to every Warbringer. And it basically, you just want to fly about near where the Warbringer spawns, typing in slash tar Z-A-M. Now, that should just basically bring them up in your target window. Though, of course, if you have an add-on like NPC scan, that will um, well, basically accomplish that task for you. The War Scouts don't drop as much. They drop similar stuff to the Warbringers minus the mount. They're a lot easier. They have 5 million health, but they still have the same abilities um, as the, the Warbringers do. So, what, uh, what can you actually get from this? What were my results? Well, um, I, I did film myself open them up, so I'll show that. But basically, I farmed for one hour, and uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just cut that. Okay, guys, so it's the very end of my um, Zandalari Warbringer like, farm run thingy. It lasted an hour exactly, and in total during that hour, I killed six of the war leaders and seven of the war scouts. Um, I'll talk more about the run specifically in the video, but it's just worth saying that it's not the run that you'll see in the background footage because I didn't get, um, I just wasn't able to record that because um, I was rendering some other stuff in the background. But anyway, the actual loot that I got is in and around here. So first of all, I started off with 63 of the reputation tokens in total. I now have a grand total of, just for the sake of ease, we'll do 32 plus, 21 plus, 33 plus... I can even turn on Lum's Luck. 32 plus 21 plus 33 plus 2, which equals 88. So 63 minus, and um, well, 88 minus 63 is, of course, 25. So I got 25 of these reputation tokens. And I then also got all of these different bags and things. Actually, this golden lotus shouldn't be there, so we'll put that away. Anyway, so this is what dropped. Let's open up the bags. And really, you get a lot. So there we go, two stacks of rain poppies. These big ones are crazy. Like, we got a magnificent leather. We got a whole bunch of exotic leather. Um, all that black trillium ore, which can actually go for a decent little bit um, in the auction house. So I do have logs of how much um, of all these various items I had um, before and after. So I'll bring you auction house totals. So just when we open them up there, you can see absolute crap ton of stuff coming out there. Really, really a lot, actually. Now, I'd be very interested to see how this compares. Look at all that wound will. Like, that's insane. That is just insane. I'm very interested to see how this compares, though, to Auction House value, so I'm going to go calculate how much this is worth on the current Auction House prices, and then I'll get back to you. Alright, so just to bring it back, um, I ended up tallying all that stuff up, um, I found out how much it's all worth in the Auction House, and the raw data was that I got 25 tokens in total, and I got... And the crafting mats, which were enough to give me 1,045 gold raw. However, there's one thing that's really important to mention. There are times when a one-hour farm of these has got me nearly 3,000 gold. It very much depends on what you get from the bags, and I'm mainly talking about Golden Lotus. Golden Lotus can actually drop from those bags, and they don't just drop in small quantities. I once had 20 of them drop, and a full stack of Golden Lotus for 40 gold each is actually quite a lot of money. So there's a bit of a sort of luck of the draw there. Now, also in a three-hour period of farming, I actually got two dinosaur mounts from them. So, on average, I think that these guys, they're not the best way to farm, uh, to farm just, like, uh, like, materials. They're not the best way to farm money or anything like that, but just as a kind of combined whole, they're pretty decent. You can get mounts, you can get materials, and then you can get rep for your alts. I'd say that if you were facing one of those large rep grinds, it would absolutely be worth farming Warbringers instead, because it's only going to take you one or two days of farming to get it all done, rather than the... I, I suppose rather long period that it would take if you're actually just doing the traditional questing method. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful, and yeah, hopefully your class can solo these Warbringers. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.